board with Hi, and thank you for joining us today. We're going to take a quick look at a fantastic way to shape behavior and promote learning. Come on, let's call in the reinforcements. The Lassage Lunch and Learn series is brought to you from LSU Health New Orleans, where at the Human Development Center, Lassard joined several initiatives in supporting individuals with developmental disabilities across the lifespan. At HDC, we provide direct services, professional development, and interdisciplinary training in support of inclusive education and community participation. To learn more about Lassard's work in supporting teachers and students across the state, visit us at www.lassard.org or you can find us among the other worthy initiatives at HDC, www.hdc.lsuhsc.edu. The goal for this 30 minute training is to strengthen your understanding of reinforcement and consider the ways it can be used to support learning. Let's get to it. When we think of the term reinforcement in general, it brings to mind a fortifying. When we reinforce something, we make it stronger. When your army or the structure you're building needs reinforcements, it needs bolstering, it needs strengthening or stabilizing. And when it comes to learning, reinforcements are the same, only they strengthen a student's ability to be successful, bolster their confidence, and provide the framework upon which we will build new skills and understanding. But you can't have a conversation about reinforcement without talking about behavior. Behavior is an observable action. The function or purpose of any behavior is always one of two options, to obtain or to avoid. Interfering or challenging classroom behaviors are no different. The student is either trying to obtain, get something, or escape and avoid something. Depending upon the student and the situation, the student may be attempting to gain a tangible or activity, maybe attention from a person or sensory input, or the student seeks an escape from a tangible a situation, a person, place, or sensory input. So I guess we can think of, a be of behavior as a sort of hide and seek. B.F. Skinner was a psychologist who first proposed that current and future behavior is the consequence of past reinforcement. Notice in the blue that both positive and negative reinforcement serve as driving forces to increase behavior. Notice in red that punishment and extinction serve as restraining forces and reduce behavior. Punishment applies something negative, painful, or unwanted in an effort to reduce a behavior. Extinction takes away all positive reinforcement and reward until the behavior goes away. Again and again, research has validated what B.F. Skinner first proposed that unlike punishment and extinction, positive and negative reinforcement can increase behaviors over the long term. So consider skipping the punishment and the planned ignoring and go all in with the reinforcement. When our reaction to student behavior remove, removes something undesirable for the student, we are providing negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement takes away something unwanted to encourage desired behavior. An example would be a no homework day for completing the day's assignments early. Taking away homework will serve to increase the desirable behavior of high productivity or achievement. Negative reinforcement is not the same as punishment, which seeks to change behavior by taking something good away from the student or by providing the student with something undesirable or not good. Because it's most effective at shaping behavior and accelerating learning, we're focusing on positive reinforcement for today. Positive reinforcement has occurred once a student gains access to a desired item or activity. Positive reinforcement sends the message that the behavior they engaged in right before the reinforcement, that it was effective, that it was desirable. Then the behavior is repeated because it worked. When our reaction to student behavior brings about a desirable result for the student, we're providing positive reinforcement. When we dislike the behavior, we must be careful not to positively reinforce it without realizing or because it seems easier in the moment. Positive reinforcement is an extremely effective method to bring about behavioral change that lasts, but it takes intentionality. Let's look at the behavior reinforcement cycle. Looking at the ABCs of behavior, there's a linear sequence. 
where there's a catalyst for the behavior and that catalyst is called the antecedent. It precedes the behavior and might be considered the reason for the behavior. Following that antecedent is the behavior which is born as a reaction to the antecedent. After the behavior comes the consequence of that behavior or what happened as a result of the behavior. What did it accomplish? The behavior is always communicating something about the antecedent and the consequence will always tell the student something about the effectiveness of their communication. Did it provide something desirable? Did it work? Was the behavior effective? The consequence oval in this graphic is larger than the others because this is the domain of reinforcement. In this example, after finishing lunch, still at the table, Gene takes off his shoes and throws them, resulting in his peers' laughter. We know the behavior without speculation, right? He threw his shoes, but we need to do some investigating with the rest. Does he usually get to leave the cafeteria when he throws his shoes? Or is it his peers laughing that gets him thrown out? Or is the goal, is he just simply motivated by the peer attention? And maybe he just likes to make his peers laugh. We can investigate the antecedent, A, and the consequence, C, to shape the behavior, B. It's the only way. I've listed some of the language we use interchangeably with the words antecedent, behavior, and consequence. Remember that language always matters and words come with feelings. So consider the, the value of uh, positive word choices. Intentionality with reinforcement is super important. Always consider what your student is trying to avoid or achieve through their behavior and how your reaction is reinforcing that behavior because your response to student behavior is always reinforcing in some way. You either encourage the behavior to continue or you extinguish the behavior through your reaction, your response and your reinforcement. So it's important to choose wisely. Remember, reinforcement increases the likelihood that a student will behave in the same way again when used appropriately, meaning after the behavior, the, the desired behavior occurs, uh, reinforcement is effective in reducing a student's challenging behavior. The right reinforcers and reinforcement schedule can keep students interested and engaged and increase the likelihood the behavior will occur again. Reinforcement can be highly effective in motivating a student to try a difficult task or a new skill. So reinforcement is a powerful tool. It can be used to teach new behaviors, increase pre-existing behaviors, maintain appropriate behaviors in the classroom and replace behaviors. It's never too late to start. While yesterday's reinforcement mistake may be negatively affecting your student's behavior today, tomorrow's correction in that area will positively affect your student's behavior tomorrow or maybe day after tomorrow. Just don't give up. There are countless skills that can be taught by using reinforcement as a part of the teaching process. Skills that lend themselves to reinforcement may be motor skills, social communication, self-help, behavior, vocational, social skills, uh, academics, life skills, the list could go on and on. And since behavior is basically any observable action, the applications for reinforcement in the teaching process are limitless. As we move into types of reinforcers, let's begin with activity reinforcers. Activity reinforcers are free and always available. They might include selecting a game or activity for recess, reading to a friend, maybe having extra time in a favorite subject, going out first to recess, or being a door holder, a line leader, or a page turner, whatever activity your student may find motivating. Social reinforcers are also free and easy to provide. Social reinforcers can be verbal praise, high fives, or spending time with a preferred person. Age, appropriate, age appropriateness needs to be considered in all categories, including this one. Observe same age peers to determine 
what types of social reinforcers are age appropriate? Hugging, for example, may be appropriate for very young children, but not for middle or high school students. Expert time can be considered an activity reinforcer or a social reinforcer. I place it in a social reinforcer category because it can be very socially rewarding for a student to be an expert and have the opportunity to share that expertise with their peers. Another type of positive reinforcement is the tangible reinforcer, which includes food items, beverages, um, age appropriate toys or games, or maybe access to an electronic device. Food is considered a primary reinforcer along with beverages because they appeal to our, prim our primitive brain and we accept food innately. Primary reinforcers are associated with basic survival needs. Uh, and that makes them very powerful. So there might be a great place to start, but the goal is to quickly move to secondary reinforcers, which are the things we have learned to value. Often individuals may be attached to items that are no longer age appropriate. There's a school of thought that says we should use strategies to replace those beloved items with more age appropriate reinforcers. This is for good reason, as there have been many accounts of high school seniors consistently provided with kindergarten coloring pages and such. This is clearly disrespectful to the student. Some adults believe that favorite items should be phased out or taken away if they're juvenile. Another school of thought leans toward age is just a number and values the item because it sparks joy in the student. Some people are somewhere in the middle. Where are you? Every student is different. What motivates one student will not necessarily motivate another. To help determine what reinforcers might be effective for a student, be observant and ask yourself some questions. What makes the student smile and laugh? What makes them happy and feel good? What kinds of things bring out their excitement? And what are their go-to activities and favorite things? What do you see them really applying themselves to and working extra hard at doing? What grabs and holds their attention? And what gets them to try new things? Just a note that can't be stressed enough. We're not working to identify and provide preferred reinforcers because our student has achieved a state of enlightenment or reached some level of perfection, nor are we trying to reward bad behavior. We are finding what motivates our highly individual students and using that information to shape them into active and invested learners. This sheet created by Teaching in the Fast Lane provides a list of 50 free reinforcers, calling them rewards. This is just an example of the many options for student reinforcers that cost absolutely nothing, and we love that. It's always good to have a list of reinforcers because many of our students grow bored with, their, with bored of their reinforcers quickly. When the reinforcement loses value to the student, it loses its power to shape behavior. A reinforcer questionnaire is one way to identify a number of potential reinforcers for a student. You wouldn't give the questionnaire to the student. You would give the A reinforcer questionnaire is one way to identify a number of potential reinforcers for a student. You would give the questionnaire to the student or parent and have them identify student favorites in several different categories, such as edibles, activities, games, characters, movies, etc. This information can be a treasure trove. The preference assessment determines what motivates a student. It answers the question, what will this student work for? Knowing what motivates a student will help you provide powerful incentives to support your diverse learners within and across learning activities, as well as with transitions. Using this graphic to support our understanding of a preference hierarchy, hierarchy you'll notice in blue that we will select three preferred reinforcers to support student learning and behavior. These will be the reinforcers most commonly used for that student. There will be times when the task or behavior requires more incentive than these preferred reinforcers can provide. And that's why we've smartly reserved a moderately, a moderately, a 
There will be times when this task There will be times when the task or behavior requires more incentive than these preferred reinforcers can provide. This is why we smartly reserved a moderately preferred reinforcer just for this. But maybe it's a really bad day or it's a very new and intimidating skill or it's an especially dreaded task. For this task, maybe we'll pull out that highly preferred reinforcer. Um, but you know, there'll be a time you know, the time will come when the task is as tall as Mount Everest or the dread is as large as the Grand Canyon or the weight of the entire world has seemingly fallen upon your student and none of these things will help. Or maybe the skill is so important that we can't risk failure. That's when we call upon the most preferred reinforcer of all. And this is the value of a preference assessment. There are differences between a reward and an incentive. A reward is a prize that's given after an achievement. An incentive is a motivating factor that provides ongoing encouragement and motivation. What should be more motivating to keep you showing up and performing? That special parking spot for being employee of the month in November? Or that paycheck you want to keep having deposited into your account? So incentivizing is not rewarding behavior. It is motivating the student to engage in the positive action that will replace that interfering behavior that you don't want to reward. Be proactive by learning what gets each student going. There are informal preference assessments and systematic preference assessments. And while the process looks different, the end goal and result is the same. A list of items that are especially desirable to the individual student. These items will be used to build an individualized bank of reinforcers that can be used to motivate students in different situations. The informal preference assessment would most likely be an interview or checklist completed by the student, the family, or very familiar staff. The systematic assessment follows a protocol that involves prevent, uh, presenting the student with an item or various items in various ways to determine which items the student likes most or shows most enthusiasm for. Let's talk token economy systems as a powerful means of shaping behavior for your learners. Tokens can be play money, counters, puzzle pieces, icons, stickers, post-its, or really anything, but it goes like this. Tokens are earned for specific tasks and behaviors. Tokens are exchanged for preferred, for preferred actions or items when they reach a specified number. The token economy should be developed in collaboration with the student or with their preferences and abilities in close consideration. Tokens can be, tokens can be play money. Let's talk token economy systems as a powerful means of shaping behavior for your learners. Tokens can be play money, counters, puzzle pieces, icons, stickers, post-its, or really anything, but it goes like this. Tokens are earned for specific tasks and behaviors. Tokens are then exchanged for preferred items or actions when they reach a specified number. The token economy should be developed in collaboration with the student or with their preferences and abilities close in mind. By using token economy systems, goals are made more concrete and progress toward goals becomes visible. Students learn to wait longer before being reinforced and students are easily reminded of what they're working toward. Okay, how do we get ready to implement a token economy system for positive reinforcement? First, the student chooses the reinforcer they're working for. Making sure the student has no access to the reinforcer they've chosen. Next, the student is taught the behavioral expectation required to earn one token. And they're, uh, and they're told and shown the number of tokens that is needed to earn their selected reinforcer. This creates uh, an exchange rate, or uh, we might refer to it as a trade-in value.
Rules of the game say that each time the student engages in the target behavior, they earn one token. And once a token is earned, it may not be taken away. Once the goal number of tokens is reached, that number has been predetermined. They trade in all tokens for their chosen reinforcer. And once the reinforcer has been earned, uh, it's immediately provided and cannot be taken away, just like your paycheck. Now, the team has to determine the target behavior or the skill to teach. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have to identify the possible reinforcers that we might be able to provide and create a menu with many options that um, that will maintain the student's interest. We'll decide how the student earns a token. Is it each time the skill or behavior is displayed or is it after three problems are completed or is it after a certain number of minutes? Keep in mind we'll be fading reinforcers as soon as the student begins to demonstrate the target behavior or skill more independently. So keep in mind how we might make that happen. For now, we're gonna prepare materials, including the token board. We'll be fading reinforcers as soon as the student begins to demonstrate the target behavior or skill more independently. So keep that in mind. Prepare materials, including the token board, tokens, data collection sheets, reinforcers, and visuals needed. Use the token economy system throughout the day and across settings as necessary. Sometimes student need, students need the system <clears throat> to be implemented to support completion of certain tasks, but not others. Uh, and uh, don't reinforce where independence is already achieved. Reinforcements lose their power when they're used unnecessarily. A token economy helps students learn to wait longer before being reinforced and helps them see their progress toward earning their reinforcer. As you're considering if your student will benefit from reinforcement, ask yourself these questions. Does the student have difficulty completing work, completing an activity independently, or have difficulty meeting behavior expectations? If you answer yes to any of these questions, or if you answer yes to similar questions, reinforcement might be helpful to use with the learner. As the student progresses toward independence, we have to plan how we will fade the reinforcements. Do we wanna require more tokens to earn that one reinforcer? Do we increase the complexity of the behavioral requirement to earn a token? Do we have them sustain the behavior for maybe a longer period of time or any period of time? Do we back down from the moderately preferred reinforcer to the basic preferred reinforcer? Your answers will depend upon the behavior or task, the uh, current reinforcement system, and most importantly, the characteristics and preferences of your individual student. Some pro tips, um, once earned, Provide that reinforcement without delay and stick to the original schedule. Be consistent. Use different types of reinforcers and change up the menu. Bring in students' special interest for increased buy-in using personalized tokens and token boards. And remember, student chosen reinforcers are typically the most motivating. These are examples of various token boards. They don't have to be anything fancy. The top left one was hand drawn on a sheet of printer paper and the tokens are smiley faces on a sticky note. Go ahead and be creative. Notice how special interests are tied in where after three Hulk fists, this student earned bubbles. More examples of what token economy systems can look like. This is a different example of how to implement a token board. Once the picture is complete, the student earns a reinforcer, which could be simply looking at the completed picture, uh, especially if it's something that is um, related to a special interest or if it has um, contains maybe a picture of themselves. So, um,
This is a different example of how to implement a token board. Once the picture is complete, the student earns a reinforcer, which could be looking at the picture or something else agreed on by the student and the teacher. When the student um, has completed the puzzle uh, by earning that final piece, in this example, we see that the student gets to go to the garden. The reason many reinforcement systems fail is that they're not consistently utilized. When reinforcement is provided in a randomly intermittent schedule, the interfering behaviors will take much longer to replace or extinguish. For this reason, uh, reinforcement schedules should be followed with fidelity. So the point is, student behavior is shaped by our behavior. The fastest way to eliminate interfering behaviors and replace them with facilitating behaviors is to consistently use a reinforcement system that allows students to work toward highly motivating and student chosen incentives. And remember, When you have a student who needs extra supports in learning a new skill, in completing work, um, in uh, engaging in beha uh, appropriate behaviors, And remember, if you have a student who is especially challenged in the area of um, initiating or attempting new tasks, completing work, or engaging in um, behaviors that meet expectation, uh, call in the reinforcements. Thanks. Have a great day. So the point is, student behavior is shaped by our behavior. The fastest way to eliminate interfering behaviors and replace them with facilitating behaviors is to consistently use a reinforcement system that allows students to work toward highly motivating, student-chosen incentives. And remember, if you have a student who's having extra difficulty um, attempting new tasks or completing tasks, or um, meeting behavior expectations, consider calling in the reinforcements. So if you have a student who seems to have difficulty attempting new tasks or completing tasks, learning new skills or um, engaging in behaviors that meet expectation, consider calling in the reinforcements. It works. Have a great day. So the point is, student behavior is shaped by our behavior. The fastest way to eliminate interfering behaviors and replace them with facilitating behaviors is to consistently use a reinforcement system that allows students to work toward self-chosen, highly motivating incentives. Reinforcements. Remember, if you have a student who seems to have extra difficult <clears throat> Thank you.
if you have a student If you have a student who's reluctant to tackle new tasks, learn new skills, complete assignments, no, 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 no. So the point is student behavior is shaped by our behavior. The fastest way to eliminate interfering behaviors and replace them with facilitating behaviors is to consistently use a reinforcement system that allows students to work toward self-chosen, highly motivating reinforcements. So the point is, student behavior is shaped by our behavior. The fastest way to eliminate interfering behaviors and replace them with facilitating behaviors is to consistently use a reinforcement system that allows students to work toward self-chosen, highly motivating incentives. Don't forget, call in the reinforcements and check out our other mini lessons for tools, tips, strategies that will help your students uh, in other ways in your classroom. Thank you for joining us. And check out our other mini lessons for tips, tools, and strategies that will help your students in many other ways in your classroom. Thanks. Check out our other mini lessons for more. Check out our other mini lessons that will benefit you and your students in your classroom. Um, you'll find lots of tools, tips, and strategies. Check out the other mini lessons in our library for more tools, tips, and strategies that will help you and your students in your classroom. Thanks a lot for joining us. Have a great day.